Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your inner divine artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. And so welcome to my new series, new playlist called Tools of the Trade. In this series, I will be introducing different tools of the trade that artists use to support their art practice and their creative expression. And so for this first episode in this new series, I'd like to share with you how to choose your paintbrushes. Exploring a little bit about the paintbrushes. There are so many types of paintbrushes. And so I'm just going to go over the basic uh, information, the basic choices you have when shopping for your, your paintbrushes. So now I'd like to talk about our brushes. So I have several brushes in front of me I'd like to share. The first ones I'd like to share with you today are the what are called the rounds. And the round brushes, just like the, the word round, they are round in shape. Uh, they kind of come to a point and these are really great for accuracy and for uh, for drawing and to, for control, for really, you know, painting. And I'm going to do a little sample here and show you what I mean. Uh, painting a line or painting curves or whatever you're going to paint. So rounds are great brushes to have in your collection as a staple. And so here's what the round looks like. It's a really nice kind of point. Now depending on the size and also with more pressure, it makes more of a broader line. So this is the round. Okay. And the next brush I'd like to share are called the flats. And just like that they sound, um, the word flat, they are flat. They a lot of times are rectangular. And these are used to cover areas and also for edging, for uh, creating that hard edge, that fine edge, that, that kind of straight edge. And so I'm going to show a sample to you of what the flats look like in action. Uh, they are a great mainstay for an artist's fleet of brushes, collection of brushes. So here's the flat. And they also make like a very nice, uh, you know, a line, a th thick, broad line. Now, depending on the size, of course. Do another line. And these are a great staple to have. Now, there's a variation of a brush that's like a flat, and it's called a bright. And a bright is a type of flat brush that uh, is also flat, kind of rectangular, but, but a little shorter, almost square-like. And brights are also used like flats for edging. You just have a little bit more control because they are shorter. The brushes are short, uh, the bristles are shorter in length. So this is a, a bright. And again, these are used for edging and having that, that hard edge. Okay. And our next brush uh, is called a filbert. Now, a filbert is sort of like a cross between a round and a flat. It's a flat brush, but with rounded edges. And so I have two sides of these today. And filberts are another great staple to have. And I'll show you what the filbert looks like. It's similar to a flat, just has that round edge versus that, that angle, that right angle. Okay, and next, this is called a rigger brush. And a rigger brush is, there's, the bristles are very long, and um, it's used to do kind of fine lines and detail work. So I'll show you what this, this rigger brush looks like. It's kind of subtle and very graceful. And it's, it's, it's a, it has a long bristle, so it's almost like it's like a dancer. It's a really cool brush. Uh, so fine lines and detail work. The rigor. And then I'm going to show you the fans. Now the fan brushes are great for feathering, for blending. And I have two sizes here. So 
So I'm going to show you what you can do with the, with the with the fans is you know go into an existing area that you painted and kind of you can blend two colors or to kind of do this feathering on the edges. So fans are they're cool for this for this purpose. Uh, next, these are called angled brushes. And what's really great about these, they're also used for edging. These are another great staple to have. Um, they're flat, but they have that cut angle. So these are great for like drawing. And again, the, these very definite lines, defined lines, and that, that edging that I've been talking about. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And these are really fun to, to draw with. You can get a lot of uh, attention to detail here. Really, you know, I think I'm gonna draw this leaf. So you can really, you know, these have a lot of control. Um, these are awesome brushes, angle brushes. And this brush is called the mop brush. The brushes are, uh, the bristles are kind of fluffy. There's a bunch of them. And it is wet, so when it's dry, it's a little more fluffed up. And these mops, mop brushes are great for uh, putting in washes, putting in like a uh, covering, you know, covering areas, doing backgrounds and really coming in and uh, they hold paint they get kind of heavy with paint and get kind of floppy kind of like a real mop that you clean with so these are fun to have and then last but not least it's just nice to have some utility brushes around that you can get at the hardware store or your art supply store and these are great for covering you know backgrounds or and just having it you never know when you're going to need like kind of a wide kind of like almost like a wall painting paintbrush and so these are good to have as well um and i'll show you with this one just you see this paint here and like if you want to if you have a big area you're painting very large scale you're gonna you know it's useful to have big big brushes like this sometimes and really put down your paint and of course this these bristles are stiff they're kind of dry, so I'm getting a lot of texture here. But yeah, that those are our brushes, um, mainly talking about the shapes. And now I want to talk a little bit about the different, the hair of the brush, the, or the bristles of the brush. There's three main types. I have what are called bristle, and these are uh, pure bristle, and they're actually, they're pig hair. There's brush, uh, hairs that are called synthetic and many of these brushes that I use are synthetic. They're fairly inexpensive but they can also be um, more expensive. It just depends on the brand and the types of brushes and where, what country they're coming from and the manufacturing and all of that. And then there's sable and sable are from many different types of animals and they're usually pretty uh, Spendy. They're pretty nice brushes. I don't have any sable brushes on me at the moment. So those are the types of bristles and hairs of the brushes to know about. And now I'd like to talk about how to care for your brushes. So after I use my brushes and they look, they all have paint loaded up in them, what I like to do is rinse them out in warm soapy water and then kind of reshape them you know, they're wet, they're clean, but kind of reshape the bristles and especially the round ones with my fingers and, you know, the brush, the bristles are wet. And then always store them upright with the bristles and the hairs coming out of your containers. I'm just using some jars here. Um, you can also, you know, whatever you store them in, it doesn't matter. But the main idea um, is to have the bristles and the hairs out and not down into the bottom of the container. And like I was just referring here, over here, I keep my brushes in here to dry sometimes in my water container and it has these little holes. So um, regardless of where you store them after you've cleaned them, the main idea is upright and then they dry nicely and they don't lose their shape. They don't get um, 
ruined. We want to preserve and take good care of them. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about was how to how many to get. I mean, ideally, you want to have one of each one of each uh, shape. So the round, the flat, the filbert, uh, the angled, etc. And the the real workhorses of your collection, which are the flats and the filberts, maybe have as many sizes as you can, as well as I think. I like to have a lot of rounds, a few sizes of rounds. So just as you go, you can collect those and um, a lot of times they're sold in a set and you can buy them like in a grouping and it's like a bundle price and then you get all the sizes and different shapes and sizes. There's many, many uh, ways to buy brushes these days where they put them all together and that's convenient. And on that note, I just wanted to make sure that you know that in the description to the videos, I have all the supplies that are recommended there for your convenience to, to purchase. You can also um, go to my website and the all the supplies are listed and there's a printable shopping list, a recommended supplies list there. And so thank you for watching my tools of the trade. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for being courageous and taking that leap into the unknown of creativity with me. Until next time, I'll see you in the studio.